Hey everybody, it's Justin from Bittner Built, and today we're gonna build a basic built-in bunk bed system. Now, why basic and not fantastic? Well, it will be fantastic later, um, but in the, all honesty, my wife, my kids and I, we have not come to a consensus on what that is going to be. Uh, there's a lot of options that you can do in designing something like this, like beams or crown molding. Uh, do you want underbed storage? Do you want shiplap? Do you want um, lighting? All sorts of stuff. And so since we are kind of at an impasse, for us, the best way for it is to say, let's build the basics that we agree upon. So a fully functional bedroom bunk bed set. Um, and live in it for like a month. See what happens, see what our needs are, see what our organizational needs are. And then in a month from now, I'm gonna make another video when I add all those other fun things. Um, so the different moldings we pick, lighting, all sorts of stuff. Uh, now, also, my friends over at Safety Source Supply sent me the DeWalt DCF887 and 88H. I've had these for about two months and I've used them in other videos, um, but I'm gonna dedicate these as my only tools I'm gonna use in this. And uh, at the end of the video, I'm gonna give you my thoughts on these uh, because I don't like giving reviews where I only have a tool for you know five minutes and say, this one's great, go buy it. I like to use them for a while and give you my, my honest thoughts on them. So let's get to building this bunk bed today on Bitner Bunk. First, we need to break down this lumber into our dimensional pieces. I'm gonna put a cut sheet at the very end of the video in both Imperial and Metric, if you wanna follow along. Uh, I'm building two queen size beds because my kids are like up here now. Um, but if you are building it for a smaller human being, make sure you measure those mattresses um, and scale down this build to accommodate. Uh, we're going to be using four by fours for the posts, uh, two by sixes for the rails, uh, we're going to break down two by fours into two by twos for our slat supports. If your bunk bed is going to be small for a tiny human that doesn't weigh a lot, then you can get away with bed slats that are three quarters of an inch. But for me, I'm doing a queen size bed for guys that are getting heavy, so I'm going to be doing full two by four slats. Now, one thing to consider before you do your cutting, um, particularly if you own a bench top planer, uh, this would be the time to run it through the planer first before we cut it down into dimension. Um, that way you're gonna save yourself a lot of sanding because this dimensional lumber is rough and it's gonna need a lot of sanding or you can just run it through the planer and get it about 90% of the way there. Uh, but when you're running big, heavy, long boards through a planer, um, even if you have your planer set up very well, you increase the propensity for snipe um, just because of the weight of the board, either as it's sagging going in or out. Um, you should obviously support it to help prevent that, but it still might happen. So since I have boards that are longer than I need, I don't care. I can just run it through and let this knife happen and just know that I'm gonna cut it off at the end before I cut my final dimensions. So I just finished planing 26 boards. All of them came out perfect except for this guy right here. You can see this one has some snipe. Uh, I probably put it in at an angle because this is on the indirection on this board. Uh, so like I said, if you can plane things when they're long, that way you can just cut off this piece. Uh, it's obviously the way to go. All of the bed slats and the two end rails are gonna be 57 inches. So that's a lot of the exact same cut. So I've set up my stop block for that. If you don't have a setup like this and you have the capability, you should at least put a piece of scrap wood and then clamp it down so that again, you're at 57 inches. You don't have to continually measure and you know that you're getting the exact same width on all of your cuts. The planer did a really good job at getting the wood most of the way there, but of course it definitely still needs its final sanding. So if you're gonna keep the wood natural for your build, go ahead and do your final sanding, staining, um, any sort of finishing that you're gonna put on these. I'm gonna paint, however. So for me, I have to make sure that I cover up any little issues because they'll be exacerbated when I paint. Uh, so any little divots, nicks, uh, different, uh, knots that are in the wood, I'm gonna go ahead and cover over with some wood putty, wait for that to dry, and then I will do my final sanding before paint. Now, 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of my side and end rails and I'm going to put three pocket holes at each end. We're pre-painting everything out here. That way all we have to do is take it upstairs for assembly. So it's time to put the bunk beds in. Now what I need to do in order for my post to be flat against the wall is I need to cut the molding. And so you might immediately just assume, hey, I'm going to make a cut here where there's going to be, I'm going to make a cut there. That's not what I'm going to do. What I'm going to do is make a cut farthest down on the trim where the, where the bed is going to end. I'm going to do the same over here where the bed is going to end. And I'm literally going to take both full pieces of trim off the wall. I'm going to assemble the bed in place and then afterwards I'm going to measure to cut the remaining piece and place it back on. The reason why I'm going to do that, if I tried to put this post in the corner and I cut the trim so that it's flush, I wouldn't be able to slide it in. I would have to put it down in and even still it would be very difficult, uh, especially because I have it going all the way to the ceiling. So um, the easier way is to just completely remove it altogether, assemble the bed and then put the pieces that I need back in place. Okay, so where the line is, I'm going to place my square right against it. And I'm gonna use this square as a straight edge for my oscillating multi-tool in order to cut this. So uh, with any hope, we're gonna get a nice clean cut on this molding. Now, I did not get a nice clean cut on this side, but that's okay. That's not the side that I cared about. I cared about this side, which has a nice straight line. This side got all messed up from this guy. And since we're gonna be putting a post here, I can easily cut off that messed up side uh, before I replace it back in later. All right, let's get assembling. We're gonna start with the corner post. I'm gonna be screwing it at the top and the bottom. That way the screw most likely will be hidden from view. And I'm alternating, so if I screw this way at the top, I'm screwing this way down at the bottom. DeWalt made quick use of that five inch screw. So I have a nicely painted wall, a painted bed frame, so I don't wanna be putting pencil marks. So what I did was I measured 16 and a half inches up. I put a tape that I cut with scissors so it's very flat and level. Uh, what we're going to do is pick this up, screw it in, and then we're going to use a level to make sure that we're level all the way across before we screw into our two studs that I marked with painter's tape as well. So I can pull these away and it's not going to leave any marks behind. There is no stud behind this beam, but I will still drive a five inch lag screw at the top and the bottom. Uh, in the construction of my home, there is still a horizontal bottom and top plate that I'll be able to strike with this screw. So we have the first wall done. Uh, obviously all these screw holes, not that attractive, but it's what's holding this into the wall. Now the mattress is actually going right here. So you can look at it and say, do I have to cover these over? No, um, most of it is going to be hidden. You definitely can choose to do that. Um, I'm gonna actually play it by ear, build everything, see how it looks. If it's something that's obvious, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and plug it or uh, put some sort of uh, covering over it. But for now, let's just keep moving along. Now we're putting this in front of a window, which you never ever really wanna do, but it's what we have to do to make everything fit in here. So for us, uh, this beam is below the window, so it's not an issue, but the next beam will be right across the middle of that window. And so we'd rather not cut away this molding. And so instead of putting it against the wall like we did with this one, on this one we're actually going to put it flush to the inside of the bed. So there will actually be a gap between uh, the board and the wall. Later, I'm gonna come back and put some spacers behind this exactly where some of these studs are, and then drive five inch long screws through those so that I can get to them. Um, but for now, we're just gonna leave this floating as we screw this in.
All right, so we're continuing to just do this around and around. It's the same process again and again. A little bit lower. If you didn't notice, my uh, father-in-law has magically turned into my beautiful wife, Christy, <laughs> who has never... I don't think you've ever been in a video, have you? I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> Frame is all complete. Now what I need to do is in this gap right here between my rail and the wall, because I was not able to put this against the wall, I need to make some spacer blocks. So I'm gonna have to pull out my tape measure and measure right here, cut some spacer blocks specifically for this gap wherever I have a uh, stud in the wall, and then drive two screws through this, the spacer, and into the stud. Before I put the bed slots on, and then it would be really difficult to get under here, let's put our molding back on. I've taken it out to the miter saw so it's cut very nicely to fit perfectly in this space. Now, you can see the paint color difference from when we painted. I'm going to make sure that I lift this just a hair above so that I get a nice clean paint line. I've put uh, painter's tape wherever I've found my studs to be. So I'm gonna get a good connection when I put this trim back on. To attach the slat rail guide, I have used two clamps to hold it into place. I offset it uh, two eighths of an inch off of the bottom. That way it's not flush with the bottom, it's just a hair up so you don't see it if you were looking from the side of the bed. Uh, every 12 inches I have pre-drilled a hole and I'm gonna use two inch wood screws to hold it to the bed. All right, we're almost done, we're at slats. So for my slats, we're using two by fours just because we're doing queen beds here and you know, that is a decent gap. These two by fours are not flexing under my weight, which is great. Uh, what I am using is one of them to act as a spacer. So what I'll do is I will screw this in, one at each end, take the spacer out, move it as a spacer to the next one. That way I maintain my spacing all the way through. Uh, also, make sure you drill the holes at these since we're doing it at the end. It can easily split your 2x4, so let's prevent that. For the guardrails on the bunk bed, I needed to place the mattresses first because you want to basically see where the mattress is in order to determine where you want to put this guardrail. And so I placed it just a little bit above where the mattress is. If my son rolled over here, the mattress would compress a little bit. And so, you know, that much would be able to slide under, but his whole body would not be able to. Uh, and then I placed the second one pretty close to the next one. Uh, you want to keep a majority of it within like the first foot of the mattress. Now I'm going to be using the same gas pipe and flanges over here to create a ladder. And all I did was I had gas pipe cut to size. I had it cut a little bit shorter. So instead of I believe 57 inches, I did 56 and a half inches because the flanges on here when they screw on they don't screw on flush and honestly I'm even having a really hard time getting these flanges all the way down on the side that they cut and rethreaded. You want to buy these at Home Depot or Lowe's or some big box store that will cut and thread it for you that way this flange will go on both sides. Uh, if you were to just bring it home and cut it yourself you'd need to go get a threading machine in order to be able to add this flange to the end. So I was having a real hard time screwing the flanges on this one on the one end. Uh, I tried using a wrench, I tried putting it in a vise, nothing was working and so then leverage came into play. Uh, I screwed a board to the top and the bottom. I stood on the board and I was able to spin it around another four or five times. So now I finally have it real tight here like this. Um, and so now it should be able to fit perfectly in the bed. I did make four of these uh, for the ladder to get up at the end, but like I said, my kids are actually pretty big and Owen's going to be sleeping up top. He played around with it a little while earlier, which of course scuffed it up all over the place, but 
uh, it made us decide that he only needed two. Um, so, you know, it might be three for a younger kid, maybe four, uh, but for a bigger kid like Owen, he decided on two. I do love that I pre-painted everything, so now I just have to go back up and do a little bit of touch-ups here and there from uh, some damage, but uh, overall, I kept the painting to the minimum in here. The basic structure of the bed is done. If you're looking for something minimalistic, you're done. Uh, the boys slept in it last night. They love it. Uh, it looks clean. It's, you know, a simple structure. In January, I'm going to do another video where I add a whole bunch of extras to this, though, and kind of bump it up a notch. So I think I'm going to add a bench seat that attaches right here. That way, when there's a lot of kids over here, they can have more seating than just the movie theater chairs. Uh, we're going to do wall coverings, maybe some sort of personal shelf up there, electrical lighting, all sorts of stuff. But that will be in another video that's going to come out in January when I have a little bit more time to be able to tackle these projects. All right, so the bunk bed is done. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about these two impacts. Uh, our sponsor, safetysourcesupply.com, sent these over to me. They were my very first sponsor on this channel, so I love whenever I get to uh, showcase some of their stuff. And I love them as a sponsor because I can say whatever I like about these things. They want me to tell you the honest truth. If it's a piece of garbage, I'll tell you. Um, it's because they just have phenomenal prices on their site, and that's what they're really interested in me telling you about. Uh, you can pick up Makita, DeWalt, uh, Bosch, and Milwaukee tools up to 60% off what the big box stores sell them for over at safetysourcesupply.com. So make sure you go over and check them out. Now, on the two impacts, the 88.7 and the 88.8, there's one difference between the two of them. All of their specs are exactly the same. On the 88.8, we have the uh, little blue guy here, which symbols their... Uh, Bluetooth Connect system for DeWalt. And what that does is this tool is then tracked by uh, an app. You're able to track its location whenever it comes into range of Bluetooth. And it's for tracking your tools if you're in a construction environment. Tools like to walk off. And so being able to monitor where your tools are, as well as lots of diagnostic functions and stuff is very cool. But for most people out there, you don't really need that stuff. So going with the 88.7, you're getting the exact same tool minus the Bluetooth um, at a much lower price. So we'll kind of move this over and say this is for a specific set of professionals. Um, so whether you're a homeowner or a professional, this one works well as well. So a little bit about the 88.7. Um, you know, I've been using it for this entire build as well as for a whole bunch of other stuff for the past two months. And I've not had it fail in anything. So as you saw in the video, I drove a couple five inch lags and it didn't slip, it didn't slow down. Um, that's a pretty beefy screw that we're putting in there. So uh, this will be able to tackle most things for most people. Um, for the price point of around $145, I think, um, this is a worthwhile investment in this tool. Uh, I find that ergonomically it's pretty nice. I have extra large glove size hands, um, so everybody's a little bit different on that, but uh, it's not too big, it's not too small. Um, I do find ergonomically, though, that the belt hook digs into my hands sometimes. Now, you would say, Justin, put it on the other side. I like to put a magnet on the other side because then I can pull with my left hand with the magnet. Um, so I do that on all my impacts across the different lines. It just so happens that the waltz hook uh, seems to come up really high and impact my hand. Um, so that's a me problem maybe, but some people it might matter to you. Uh, a little itty bitty positive thing for me is that it has a built in lanyard loop. And why that's important is because all of my workers go up in trees and on roofs, and when we're going up there, we need to tie all of our tools to ourselves. That way it doesn't fall and kill anybody uh, or damage a homeowner's uh, you know, house. So having that on there might've cost them a penny in plastic, uh, but it matters to me. So thank you very much for putting that on there, DeWalt. Uh, I like DeWalt's form factor in batteries. So that's not even this specific, it's you know to everything. I have a problem with my left pointer finger that I see an orthopedic surgeon for in my knuckle. I get pain in there regularly, so I have to get shots in my knuckle. 
Uh, very painful. Um, so certain motions hurt me. Uh, and so I really like that I can use my thumb for this. I can use a whole bunch of different fingers to grab this battery on and off. I don't have to use my pointer if I don't want to. On the Milwaukee, both the M12 and M18, I have to use it and it hurts. So even this pinching motion, um, I'm getting old, right? Some of us old people, things hurt. And uh, so this guy hurts me actually. So I do like the form factor on the DeWalt. They, since I have this one out, I wanna show the rate of speed that this starts at. So when I squeeze the trigger, I get immediate high torque on this one. This one actually, it might be hard to see on camera. This one slowly ramps up. It's not as immediate as the DeWalt. So I don't know if I can list this as a positive or a negative for both. Um, I believe the way that Milwaukee markets this on the slow start is that it helps prevent um, stripping of screws. Uh, if you have too much torque right away and you're not fully seated or seated correctly, you could more likelihood of tear out. So I might actually make a video to compare that on some of these different tools to see if that actually does it. But, you know, you obviously have to do that in a very scientific way. So I have to think about that for a little bit. So just something to note uh, between the two. Now, one other thing for these two, because the Milwaukee is kind of my go-to one usually, um, it is much stubbier than the DeWalt. Otherwise, they're basically the exact same tool. So uh, if you're on the DeWalt platform, would I say, hey, jump ship and go for this one? No, this one's great. Um, do I like this one a little bit better? Yeah, but it's only a little bit better. So uh, overall, I think this is a really great tool. I typically rate that for me in that I've been getting a lot of tools from sponsors. It's kind of the cool thing with having a YouTube channel now. And so after I'm done with a video, I can choose to keep the tool or sell it or give it to a friend or whatever. And I was like, hmm, what do I want with this? And I said, I like this one a lot. I'm actually gonna keep this in my shop. I'm interested in having it. So that maybe gives you an indication on like, this is a quality tool. Um, you know, rather than me getting rid of it, I want to keep it. Even though I have a lot of other platforms, this one, I said, yeah, let's keep it in the lineup. Probably going to sell this one just because I personally don't need the uh, Bluetooth system on here. But um, this one definitely fits the bill for me. So if you're on the DeWalt platform, great. If you're looking for a platform, this is definitely a very affordable, very high power quality impact driver that you could take a look at. Uh, thank you very much again to my sponsor, SafetySourceSupply.com, for providing these. Check out their website. They have phenomenal prices on tools. It's a very easy thing. Math doesn't lie. Go check it out. Uh, everything is brand new, factory, uh, and they're authorized retailers for Bosch, DeWalt, Milwaukee, Makita, um, and many other different brands. I hope you'll like and subscribe to the channel, and of course, stay safe in the shop. I will see you in the next video.